Well, good morning, everybody. Great to see all your smiling faces. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day is right. Don't you didn't forget, guys, did you? <laughs> you're caught now, anyhow. So good thing you're in church. You can ask for forgiveness. <laughs> let's stand up and let's give God glory. <laughs> For my waking breath, for my daily breath, I depend on you, I depend on you, for the sun to rise, for my sleep at I depend on you, I depend on you, you're the way, the truth and the life, you're the well that never runs dry, I'm the branch and you are the vine, draw me close and teach me to abide. Where the Spirit leads As I'm following I depend on you I depend on you For the victories Still in front of me I I depend on you. You're the way, the truth, and the light. You're the well that never runs dry. I'm the branch, and you are the vine. Draw me close and teach me to abide. Be my strength, my song in the night. Be my all. Treasure my prize. I am yours forever, you're mine. Draw me close and teach me to abide. Sing praise to you, Holy Spirit. When I pass. As I enter rest, I depend on you. Oh, I depend on you. my prize I am yours forever you're mine draw me close and teach me to abide I am yours forever you're mine draw me close and teach me to abide
2 verse 5 states and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith not rest in the wisdom of men but in the power of God and in Romans 5 1 and 2 therefore we, since we have been justified through faith we have peace through God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And in John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Great is his faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with me. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail. Thank you. 
great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living
roaring lion, proving the grave has no hold on us. He broke every chain. As believers, the power of sin is dropped off of us. It has no power over us. Worship you, Jesus. Worship you, Jesus. You showed everything that's been created, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the God of all creation. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Not only did you raise from the dead, you have set us free, but also when we've called on your name, <laughs> you've raised us up and made us to sit together with you in heavenly places. Yes. Thank you. We are yours, Lord. You've made us more than conquerors. You've given us wisdom and insight. And the truth is, more that we get to know you, the more we walk with you, the more you prove your faithfulness over and over and over and over. You're good to us, Lord. You're good to us, Jesus. And then you granted us your spirit. You've granted us your spirit. When we've surrendered our life to you, your spirit caused our spirit to be entwined with you, to become one with you. And then you gave us the measure of faith. We worship you, Lord. I pray and ask that your spirit would open the eyes of our understanding this day so that we may obtain a deeper revelation of who you are and who you've created us to be. That we would be light bearers, image bearers of the Most High God. We worship you, Jesus. We yield our hearts to you this day, this moment. We declare that you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of all honor, all glory, and submission. We magnify you, Lord, in the glorious name of Jesus above. Amen and amen. amen. Well, greet one another and you may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Community Life Church. So good to see you all on this wonderful Mother's Day. Um, my name is Jason, and I'm glad to welcome you here today. If this is your first time uh, with us, um, I just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. You are our guest today, and we would like to stay connected with you. So if you'd look in the seat back in front of you, there's a little card there. You can uh, fill out those few lines in the card. It looks just like that picture on the screen. Fill out those little lines on that card and drop it in the box on the way out. Uh, we'd appreciate that. For those that are watching online, welcome to you as well. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, make sure you push all those little buttons, a like, subscribe, share, comment, all that kind of stuff, because that helps more people hear about what God's doing here in Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, we also want to invite you to come join us next week to be here, part of, part of what's going on here in, uh, at Community Life Church. Our mission here at Community Life Church is still the same as it has been, and that is to help people to know God, find purpose, and experience life. How many realize that apart from knowing God, experiencing true life is, is uh, not really going to happen? You don't get to experience the fullness of life until you know who God is, until you have that relationship with him. I'm, I'm not saying you can't go through life. You can go through life. You can breathe. You can, you can do the things. But you don't get to have the true experience of, of fullness of life apart from knowing who God is. And so our hope today is that you grow a little bit closer to knowing him today. 
um, that your relationship with him it draws draws nearer, and, and and you get to receive what he has for you today. Um, anyway, uh, before we talk about tithes and offering and whatnot. Uh, before we start, parents, if you're dedicating a child today, uh, now's the time to go back and get them from the children's department and uh, bring them back in here. Yeah. And we're going to have a, a child dedication today. We're excited about that. Amen. So this is the, the part of the service we receive tithes and offerings. We want to make it as easy for you as possible. So we give you several ways to do it. You can do it electronically uh, through the um, clcbutler.org slash give. You can give through the church app if you've downloaded that. You can also text to give with the number on the screen. And then finally, uh, if you look in the seat back in front of you, there is an envelope. You can put cash or check in that envelope and give, uh, drop that in the box on the way out. We, we'd appreciate that as well. You know, as we were, as we were singing this morning, uh, just about five minutes ago, whatever, we, we, we sang a song that said, All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. And I was just dwelling on that, thinking about there's nothing that I've needed in my life that God hasn't provided. Amen. Now, he doesn't always provide it in the way that I want him to or expect him to, or think he should. And, you know, I've been guilty of uh, being frustrated and saying, God, that's not the way I want it. But it's not about how we want it, right? Because it's not about me. But he's always provided. I've never lacked anything that I truly needed because God has provided that. He's taken care of it. So as we give today, I just want you to think about, you know, you're giving to God a, a portion of what he's given to you, simply recognizing that it's all his anyway. It all belongs to His, him. Nothing that we have is truly our own. We're simply stewards of it, right? We're overseers. It all belongs to him. So uh, I'm just going to say, say a blessing, and then I'll tell you about a few opportunities we have going on. God, thank you that you've given us the opportunity to give back. Yes. Lord, we give back just a portion of what you've given to us, recognizing that it's all yours in the first place. It's not ours. Thank you for allowing us to be stewards over what you've given us. And help us, Lord God, to be faithful with all that you give us. Lord God, we give it to you today, trusting that you're going to use it for your glory that more and more people will come to the knowledge of you and walk in your truth, that more and more people will be set free and come to the true knowledge of, of you and, and experience the fullness of life. Thank you, God, for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We do want to uh, honor our mothers today. So on, on the way out today, I just want to remind all the mothers to grab a carnation on the way out. Those are for you. Don't just look at them and say, how pretty, but go ahead and take one with you. Yeah. You can uh, enjoy that. Uh, I want to tell you all about prayer this week. Tuesday morning at 1030, we have a prayer meeting here at the church. Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we have another prayer meeting here at the church. Either way, we'd like you to come join us. I don't know what your schedule is. I don't know if you work nights, if you work days, if you work mornings, if you work evenings, whatever it may be. Uh, we just encourage you, though, to come be part of one of those prayer meetings or come be part of both if you want. But it's an opportunity that we come together as a body um, to go before the Lord and ask for him to, to work on our behalf. Ask him to speak to us, ask him to work uh, in our government, work in our um, school systems, all the different things. We pray for, for many different things, and we just kind of teach you to pray too. So if you don't feel comfortable praying, that's okay. You don't have to pray out loud. Just come and join us and uh, experience that. I, I promise you, you will be blessed. Uh, I want to mention to you the uh, Jack Summer Camp. Uh, we got a few youth fundraiser we've been doing for the Jesus Adventure Camp to try to help uh, get the price down for some of the kids that are going, uh, and that is that we've been selling flower bulbs to raise money, and that that ends today. But I wanna I wanna make this clear to you: if you forgot to buy something for mom, you can still order online right now. As a matter of fact, if you're squirming in your seat saying, "Oh, I gotta stop by somewhere on the way home," then no, no, reach in your pocket, grab your phone, go to the app, and and you can go ahead and order these uh, flower bulbs and stuff, and then you can say, "Hey, mom." Check it out. I ordered them for you. They'll be coming shortly, right? <laughs> Thinking. <laughs> All right. So don't don't forget to sign up um, through that. You can, it, the money that we raised goes to help support the kids to help pay for some of their tuition. You can actually uh, designate it either to an individual person or you can just designate it to go to the group as a whole, and that'll be divvied up among them. Um, don't forget to sign in through the app. If you have interest in sponsoring a youth, that's also a possibility. If you say, "Well, I don't really need any flower bulbs." My mom's not going to plant them anyway or whatever. That's okay. Um, you could still donate uh, to be part of that, help the kids go. Because I do believe that this is an opportunity for God to speak to our young people. This is an opportunity for them to encounter God in a way that they have never encountered him before. And so uh, if you can support in any way, we'd, we'd appreciate that. Now, I know this is Mother's Day, but i got to talk to the men for just a minute. Men, um, 
we want to invite you to join us for the, uh, for the men's uh, Bible group. We do it the third Tuesday of each month, and it's at 7 p.m. So that happens to be this Tuesday, the third Tuesday of the month. We just want to invite all the men to come be part of that. Uh, if this is your first time with us or if this is, you know, if you've been coming for a long time, either way, come and join us. Uh, it's just an opportunity that we get together as men. We talk about the things of the Word of God. We, we uh, talk about sometimes some of our struggles, some of our failures. But we also talk about what God's doing in our life. And it's just an opportunity to get to know one another better, to get to know the Word of God better. And I just want to invite you to come be part of that here at Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. Um, it's like iron sharpening iron. We get together and, and, and we can you start to realize that, that God wants to, to break off the hard areas of our life. God wants to smooth out some of the rough spots. And we only do that whenever we uh, come together as men and, and get to, to deal with those things. Finally, I want to mention the rummage and bake sale. Get ready for our annual rummage and bake sale. It's coming up July 20th through the 22nd. If you've noticed, we've been collecting a lot of items back in the back couple of classrooms and such. Um, if you have any gently used items, we welcome you to bring them and uh, put them in the sale. But also, if you have time, that you'd like to donate time, we're looking for people to help to both uh, organize the items that we have. We're looking for people that are going to help bake some goods uh, before then. And also those that are willing to serve during the, the rummage sales. So if you can serve in any way, um, we'd, we'd appreciate that. And then uh, finally, um, Pastor Stephen, maybe we want to invite you to come up and, and share the word of God. And also we're going to have the uh, child dedication. So it's pretty exciting. This morning it is a special morning because we are dedicating children yes and we're glad that family and friends are here to experience this this special time for sure and uh, we understand that and we know because scripture declares it that children are a gift from God <laughs> You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Awesome. And I praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Ooh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, I want to explain. We want to explain the significance of uh, child dedication and why we do it here at Community Life Church. It is a ceremony where Christian parents come, and even their families, they come and they make a commitment before the Lord that they would uh, deliver and raise this child into the things of God, the wisdom of God, the, th the word of God, according to God's ways. And so they would be teaching them. They're making a commitment. They're, they're bringing and dedicating their child. But really, in a sense, it's a commitment they're making to God Almighty. In the Bible, we see uh, in the Old Testament and New Testament, Parents bringing their children to be dedicated to the Lord. In the Old Testament, we see that Hannah went and brought their son, uh, Samuel, to the priest Eli for dedication. And as a matter of fact, the whole nation, as the child was eight years old, would bring them to the high priest, and the high priest would pronounce a blessing over these children. We even see uh, Jesus being uh, Joseph and Mary, giving uh, Jesus to the temple and going to the high priest at the time and saying, you know, we're dedicating this child to the Lord himself. So we have Old Testament and New Testament uh, insight into uh, child dedication. And we see uh, no record whatsoever of uh, infant baptism in scriptures. None. And so what we want to do is, is follow the word. Can I hear an amen to that? <laughs> so what it is is a parent is dedicating and making a commitment to raise that child according to God's ways. And that would be through the example of their own life, not just at church, but outside of church. Then uh, we believe that because of that example of that parent, that it would come to a place where that would be a natural thing for that child to decide to follow Jesus as their Lord. And the parents, you know, are today 
making a commitment that they're going to teach their children the ways of God through the scriptures, through an example before themselves, and to understand that, you know, God himself loves them with an everlasting love. And of course, like you said, the children are a gift from God. And yes. If they're a gift, we are to be good stewards. As parents, we actually are to be stewards of our children. Right. And the wonderful life that he's given them. And, you know, if you're a parent for any length of time, you already know your parenting is a 24 7 <laughs> responsibility. It goes on for a lot of years. Amen? And it takes a lot of wisdom. It takes a lot, it takes a lot of love and a, a whole bunch of patience yes. to be able to raise our child in, in the ways of God. And the thing that we want to remind the parents of is that God is with you every step of the way. Yes. That your Heavenly Father is always with you and always ready to hear your prayers, always ready to give you grace and help and wisdom to raise your child and the encouragement you need because we will need encouragement yes to be a godly parent. and this is why it's so important to have a church a church body around you that says hey we're here for you we believe in raising a child to know god and so the church is here also to help parents to do that very thing to have a solid foundation we have uh, uh this scripture found in the book of deuteronomy it's up on powerpoint and this is instruction uh, uh, for the parent. And it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Never forget these commandments that I'm giving you today. Teach them to your children. Repeat them again and again. Talk of them when you're at home and when you're on the road and when you're going to bed and when you're rising up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on the foreheads as a reminder write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates the wisdom of god is is truly relevant to our everyday life and he's he's asking us to give our children a biblical world view amen this is going to if, when we do this, this is going to help your child understand everyday life what they're seeing, what they're hearing, what they're observing with their eyes. And when we put them in the baseline of following Scripture, they will be able to discern good from evil, right from wrong, so they don't get caught up in the flow of the world's system. They'll be rooted and secure in the Scriptures through Jesus Christ. It's really important for us to understand that this, what we're doing, is not the day of salvation for your child. There are, there are actually uh, denominations that believe if your child gets water baptized, they're saved, that's all they need, and they're going to heaven. Uh, scripture does not teach that. It does not teach that. Salvation is a free gift. And that occurs when they're old enough to understand right from wrong, understand that they have been walking in sin and rebellion before a holy God. And that they come to that realization that they have sinned against God and other people, and they come to him and ask for forgiveness, and they submit their life to him. That's salvation. That's salvation, and I've, I've never seen a baby declare that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and parents, you're re responsible to lay the foundation of this entire life through teaching, through a, an example of the way you live and how you react and the way you actually see life and then speak to one another about life. Those kids are listening to everything you guys are saying. It's amazing. It really is amazing. So they can remember. <laughs> you say, go make your bed. <laughs> they know what you said. <laughs> but it is the parents' found, uh, responsibility to lay that foundation so that it really would be a natural thing 
because of the parent's example for that child to just, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. It would be a natural thing for that child to definitely go into understanding Jesus is Lord. He is God. He's my Savior. This is not salvation and this is not water baptism. Water baptism is, according to scriptures, after you believe, then you're water baptized. You confess Jesus the Lord. It is a public declaration of your faith. That's not what's happening today. It's not salvation, and it is not water baptism. This is dedicating your children to the Lord and promising him that you, as a parent, will teach and nourish that child, strengthening him or her with the word of God. Being, uh, bringing them to church and having fellowship with one another so that they understand the unity that God has called the church to become. And it is a responsibility for us as a church also to express the love of God to these children. Do you understand? It's not just, okay, they're doing it. But no, we are all one family. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, and so we are going to exhibit the love of God before them also. Amen? And uh, believe me, uh, you need encouragement. You need support. <laughs> you need to cry out to God for help. <laughs> because raising godly children in a day and age that we're in is a difficult job, and you need the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. And this is what you're doing today. You're calling on God to help you fulfill your responsibility as parents. Amen? So we call up the families and we'll introduce them, introduce the children, and then we'll begin the dedication. No? It's not on? Testing, testing. You like to come up, bring the children. Come on, gang. Let's give them a hand. We have the Burgunders this morning with their three children. Yes. And then Tim and April McKay with Paisley and Hunter. One over here, so you're in the light. Your pictures are up here like that. Maybe we'll have you stand. Why don't you come on this way? We'll have all the families stand in the same place. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cute. Let me get my stuff here ready. All right. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have Alex and Kelly here. Our dedicating Ella Burgunder. Ella, you want to wave to everybody? Say yeah. hi. <laughs> That's Ella. And then we have Alyssa. There you go. Alyssa Burgunder. Alyssa, you want to wave to everybody out here? That looks yeah. like fun. <laughs> and then we have little Arlo. Yeah. Arlo Burgunder. <laughs> hi, Arlo. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's and beautiful. That's Kelly and Alex. The, yes. The Let's give them a hand. Yeah. And then we have the McKeg family. Yes. We'll go next to Hunter. Hunter, you want to turn around and say hi to everybody? Hunter McKeg. All right. Here you go. And Paisley. Yay, Paisley, give him a hi. And then we have <laughs> this is um, Tim and April for the mom and the dad. So give them a hand if yes. you would. Yes. <laughs> I know, yeah. Well, that's an awesome time of year. <laughs> There's snow on the ground then. <laughs> it's a what? Easter and it's Easter and Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, uh, child dedication uh, is about uh, parents making a vow before God, asking Him to help them fulfill what their responsibility is according to scripture 
And let me ask you, parents, are you committed to doing your part to help your child discover the love of God that's offered in Jesus Christ? Yes, yes. we just ask you to just... Yeah, just be Silent. verbal because we, this is this is where it counts, yeah. guys. <laughs> you want to just say "I do" before the Lord. Or there no? you go. Okay, I All do. Right. <laughs> Did you ask? Okay. Yes. Do you affirm your own faith in Jesus Christ and renew your dedication to follow Him? Yes. All right. Do you believe that your child is a gift from God and that he or she has been born to experience God's love and to serve God? You do. Do you dedicate your child to God today? Yes. Do you pledge as Christian parents that you'll bring up your child in a Christian home, looking to God for wisdom, strength, guidance, so that you raise your child that they are strong in the faith? Do you promise to model a Christian life so that your child may be led by your example? Yes. You do. You promise to pray for your child regularly because your children need prayer, realizing that it's only with God's hand upon their life that they can truly be blessed. Will you ask God's blessing upon the life of your children to guide, to guard, and direct them through all of their years? Do you pledge to raise your child to know Jesus and help them begin a faith journey of their own when they're able to make that decision for themselves? Okay. So we invite the congregation to pray with us. We're going to pray some prayers over the families. Uh, and we just want you to join us in our faith to, so that as we pray, we are believing that we're imparting blessings as yes. we ask the Lord for this. And so, Father, we're going to first pray a, a group prayer and then would like to at the end of that prayer lay hands on every child and and speak a blessing over them and so father we come in the name of jesus yes. lord and we dedicate each one of these children to you we dedicate ella we dedicate Alyssa, we dedicate arlo we dedicate paisley and we dedicate hunter father your word says that you saw each one of them being formed in their mother's womb that each one is fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Your word says that all the days of their life have been written in your book. And Father, we pray that each one of these children would discover their destiny. Yes. Is first and foremost to know that they are created by you, that they're loved by you, and that they have a rich and rewarding relationship with you, Jesus. Mm. We call each one of these children, we call Ella, we call Alyssa, we call Arlo, we call Paisley and Hunter. We call them set apart for you, Lord, and we pray that each one would one day naturally open up their heart to receive you, Jesus, as yes. their Lord and Savior. Yes. I pray, Father, that you would protect them from the evil one. Yes. And that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Yes. I pray that each one would dwell in the secret place yes. of the Most High God. And under the shelter of your wings all the days of their life. Yes. And Father, I pray that by your grace you'd give the parents and children hearts to follow after you. As a family, yeah. Jesus, that you would take your lordship place over that family. And Father, I pray that each child would follow your plan and purpose for their lives. And that yes. they would bear good fruit in every good work for the sake of your glory and your kingdom. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we, we just, we're just going to pray and lay hands on each one yes. and just say, we bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God's May the Lord's blessing come upon you. face shine upon you and be yes. gracious to you and give you wisdom. Yes. In and Jesus' children name. children are set apart for the work of God. In yes. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Yes. We bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit guide you all the days of your life. We pray that your hearts would be open and receptive to know him as Lord and Savior. That you would bear fruit yes. in your life for him. And enjoy a satisfying life serving him. Hallelujah. God bless this family. In yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, give them all a hand if you would. Congratulations. Yep. Congratulations. And we have some a little we have a bag of gifts for, for the family, some 
Some things, something for everybody, yeah. All right, thanks guys for coming in. What's in there, Arlo? See ya. <laughs> All right. Wait, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning. All right. <laughs> yeah. We are continuing in our series in the book of 1 John. So if you have your Bible with you or your electronic device, whichever it is that you have, but you really do need to have yeah. a Bible that you call your own, that you can work your way around and become familiar with. We're in the, the book of 1 John. It's towards the back of the Bible. You need a paper Bible, too. Yeah, paper Bibles are still... You're going to need one in case okay. they just decide that they're not going to allow that Bible to be on the Internet. Yeah. We're going to be in Chapter 2. Uh, we've been in this series now for probably about three weeks or so. There are only five chapters in the book of First John. It's written by, we've been saying this week by week, but just so that we remember, the book we're reading was written by the Apostle John. He was one of the 12 apostles of Jesus. So he knew Jesus very well, walked closely, intimately with him. He also wrote the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. He wrote the, the letters 2nd and 3rd John, which are just two short little books right after this one. And he wrote the, the book of Revelation, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, and so John, again, was very familiar with who Jesus was. Uh, and, and when and a person uh, gives their life to Christ... Becoming acquainted with the Word of God, reading the Word of God, and I'm going to grab my Bible here, um, is really vital for every believer uh, because it's through God's Word that we f discover how to find everlasting life through Christ. That's pretty important, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know? And we begin to understand as we read the Word of God who he is yes. and what his character is like and what he's doing in the world. Like this Bible is a book of God's story to people, to you, to me. And so it's important that we understand the big story that he's telling. Uh, and, that, and he has a plan and purpose for your life. I remember how astounding that was to me the first time we began to read that in the book of Ephesians. Like, plan and purpose for my life, and not just my life, but your life, everyone's life. That's right. Uh, but reading, telling people, standing up here and saying, you, you should be reading the Bible, can sound like, if you've never read the Bible, a pretty daunting task. How many of you at first were like that, like, huh, where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I often recommend First John to yeah. people to begin because it's short, it's doable, five chapters, but in those five chapters, it really reveals things that especially revolve around what it means to be truly saved yes, or to be born of God. And sometimes this becomes a big issue uh, in the mind and heart of a person. Like after they give their life to Christ, it's like, we say old things have passed away, all things are new. And sometimes it feels like, what, I, I still look the same. Like, Am I really saved? And if, at times, if you've doubted your salvation, you're not alone. Right. It's actually many Christ followers would, would admit that they have experienced times where their faith wavers. And, and the enemy kind of whispers that mm -hmm. causes you to doubt. You're probably not even born again. You're, you probably don't really even know God. And so John makes it clear in these first in these five chapters that his purpose in, in writing is so that we can know yes. that we have eternal life. 
that we're not meant to live in some perpetual state of doubt. Because if you just live in that state of doubt, you never really can go forward. You're always just, oh, no, I don't know. We have to know that we're saved. Come on. We know we're on the path, and then we get started. Um, and so he writes that in 1 John 5.13. Uh, we'll look at this eventually because this goes forward. We're not there in that chapter yet. But he says, these things, this is John, 1 John 5.13, these things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. We should have that on the, that should be on the PowerPoint back there, yeah. First John 5, 13. I hear pages turning. Yeah, Let's wait till everybody good, yeah. gets here. <laughs> so in these chapters, John gives clear indications of what true salvation, you know, it becomes evident yes. in a person's life, in the life of a believer. There's evidence of true salvation. And this is important because we live in a day, you know, where everybody's vying for their own truth. Well, this is what I think God is like, and my God would never do that. And, mm -hmm. you know, here's what I believe that I see in the word of God, and I believe this, but I don't believe that. And you know, all roads lead to God. Everybody in the end is going to be saved. I mean, you hear a lot of things like this. Yeah. And people can say a lot of things. They can have a lot of opinions. And don't we know it? Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, just social media is like, it's flooded <laughs> with opinions. But First John writes that there are some specific evidences of true salvation. Yeah. And this is important that we know it. And we just look at ourselves and go, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on that path. And he uses these contrasts. And when you read this book yes. between light and darkness, he'll say, or, or truth, this is truth. And if, this, if you're not walking in the truth, then it's a lie. He talks about children of God, children of the devil, love for the Father, love for the world. He keeps using these contrasts, right. like Christ and Antichrist. And the contrast that when we read through these chapters helps to show the difference between a true follower of Christ and somebody who might say, well, I know Jesus, which is what these people in that day were doing. Uh, but they weren't actually born of God. Right. And some of them directly and openly opposed Christ. And so there are evidences. There are evidences that will be revealed in the life of a true believer. And, and we should know them, actually. We really, we should. We should know them and so that we can judge ourselves, see where our progress is. You know, not anybody is born again who is completely mature. We are all on a path. We're all growing. And so you cannot expect somebody who's just getting saved today to know what somebody has been walking with Christ for 10, 15 years, you cannot expect it them. But uh, for instance, going back, one of the things that would be an evidenced in your life is found in chapter 1, and it's verse 8. And it's, it says that John makes a point that a, a true believer has now has an awareness of sin. Has an awareness of sin. We have an awareness of sin now. And it says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Truly, an unsaved person is not concerned about sin. <laughs> Unless there are some difficult consequences that when they get caught, and then that's just a little hiccup in their life, so to speak. They're, they're not worried about uh, lingering guilt or shame, anything like that. They're just head down continuing on you know, or they're, they're going to be say uh, real slough it off real easy well nobody's perfect we've maybe we've said that <laughs> another way is is that some it'll be blame shifting it'll be well look at that guy look at that guy look at that guy you know uh, and I'm not as bad as them uh, so I'm okay it, it, that's not it uh, the person who is truly born again has salvation, has a heightened sense of your own sin, of your own sin. There, this is, a, you know, this is different from salvation because at salvation, it's our recognition that 
you know what, I'm, I stand before a holy God, and I'm not holy. And I have actually rebelled against him in many ways, thought, word, and deed. And so I stand before him guilty and condemned. But yet he's offering us salvation and forgiveness of our sins. That's not what we're talking about here. This is as we are born again. We come to the recognition that, you know, boy, that old thought pattern is not right. The, the way of this habit I'm, is not right. You know, the way I, I respond to people is not right. So we, we're finding these things out as we're growing in Christ. You know, the, <laughs> when you're born again, that's not the last time you deal with sin. Can I get an amen? <laughs> so what is happening here is we find out in 1 John is that he's, he's bringing us into a mature character of Christ. And the Holy Spirit will slowly refine the way we think our attitudes, our responses, and so it's important for us when we get pricked by the Holy Spirit in any area that we repent, that we confess, I see, Lord, this is sin. This isn't right. This is not who I re you've made me to be. This is not part of our kingdom. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, right? You're born again. And so now what we're doing is discovering who we are in Christ. Again, like Pastor Mamie said, this is God's story, but we're involved. We're tightly united with him. So we're discovering who we are as new creations. And so when you think about that, we have a new awareness of sin, that with that comes, we have this on the screen, the, the regenerated heart of a true believer has new desires. That's like what Pastor Steve's talking about. It's like we have new desires to walk towards God yeah. and move away from sin. And that comes, why does that come? Because the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of you. Come on. And this isn't just about salvation. Like it's not, salvation isn't just like my fire insurance, my ticket to heaven. It's about lordship. Yeah. And so as the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, He's prompting us to work out our salvation to go towards God. So this is natural. If a person's really born of God, then the regenerated heart of a true believer has some new desires developing. They don't all just come overnight. Come on. But as slowly along the way, we see some new desires developing to obey God's commands. And so the unsaved person, we could say, well, they're not interested in God's commands. It's like, don't tell me about God. I don't really want to hear about it. <laughs> But the saved person yeah, here we go. has a desire to please God. It might be faint at first, but it's there. And it's, it's 1 John 2, 4 says this, if someone claims, I know God, you know, but doesn't obey God's commandments, this is John talking, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Like, that's kind of ouch. <laughs> I mean, he, here's his contrast, you know, between truth and a lie. Come on. Are you a truth teller or are you a liar? Like, wow, John. He doesn't say you're telling a lie. He says you're living a lie. There if you, you say, I know God, but I don't really care about his commandments. I'm by the, you might not say I don't really care about his commandments, but, commandments, but it's by the way we live. Yep. It's by our priorities that yep. we pretty much are saying, I don't care about God's commandments. And again, this is pretty strong. Amen. But the word of God is like this. Yeah, it's sharper than a, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, it says in Hebrews. The word of God is living and sharp and active like a two-edged sword. It pierces into the heart. So it's natural for these things to like hit our heart and go, oh, like and judge ourselves on it. Right. And sometimes we need this. Because we've been living in the world and our mindsets have been, you know, on the world. And so the word of God has this way of piercing into our mind and our heart. And, and, and then it's awakened. These yes. things need to become really awakened on the inside of us. Because, like I say, we can all be pretty dull. Amen. <laughs> so John's making it pretty plain right here. And we, we do need to hear it often this way. Verse True. 5 
along there. It says, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. Well, see, this is how we show God that we, we love him. That is how we know we're living in him. Verse 6, those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. And we mm -hmm. talked some about this last week. Uh, but it's so important. This is why it's so important for new believers, especially to get into a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church with other believers around them, to get around other people who've gone before you a little bit further, and they understand how it yep. is at the beginning, and they, they can share with you some of their own struggles and how they've come to know Jesus better and, and what you go through. Our hearts need to be awakened to these new desires, to things of the kingdom. And, and we're just really proud of the parents who yes, came and amen. did that this morning. To stand before the church and make a public statement, you know, before God, that I want to teach my children the ways of God. That takes courage. Yes. And we're, we're proud of you for doing it. That's and right. And we're here as a church to help people, to help families do that. You know, I believe that, like this morning, God's smile is on you. He's like going, you're, you're going in the right direction. Amen. And so it's okay, like when we first start out, we don't know anything, and we need these desires awake, and it's normal and okay to start out unaware and uninformed about the things of God. It's, it's, it, we all did. Yes. But what isn't okay is to just stay that way. Because we're meant to grow. <laughs> you know, I could remember when we first started to attend a Bible-believing, like a Bible-teaching church, a spirit-filled church that taught the Bible. I had no idea about the Bible. I grew up Catholic and then Lutheran became Lutheran and, you know, it's similar to Catholic, but I, I had no idea about the Bible except what I heard little snippets like on a Sunday morning mass where they would have a little snippet of a gospel and a snippet of an e, uh, of epistle and, and maybe talk something around it. But I never read a Bible. I'm sure we had, we had some big thick one at our home, but it was somewhere on a shelf somewhere and like this thing. <laughs> no one was reading the Bible. Uh, I never attended a prayer meeting. You prayed at church, you made responsive prayers, but never never went to a prayer meeting and, you know, like God forbid, pray out loud in front of people. It was like, no. <laughs> never served in the church. You know, all of it was just brand new. When we went into this church, it was like, whoa, this is completely different than what I'm used to. Because serving in the church was never promoted. Right. You know, I had never known that scripture says as believers that we each have been given a gift. You've been, you've been gifted by God. Each person in the body of Christ to be, to be used to serve other people, to help advance the kingdom, grow the kingdom. You know, I didn't realize that God wanted me to become a disciple and help make other disciples until I began right. to read the Bible and mixed it up, rubbed elbows with people who said, hey, didn't, this is what the Bible says. And so you have to just begin somewhere like that. And that the Bible calls people to become a disciple. You know, in my mind, a disciple was like, whoa. If I heard the word disciple, it somehow meant like you're cloistered off away in some deep, you know, you're studying, the, you're a disciple. But the Bible actually says that every believer is a dis, called to be a disciple. Right. Did you know? You know, if you've given your life to Christ, you're called to be a disciple. And a disciple is just simply somebody who's a learner. Yes. A student of their master. And Jesus' word is, is our ma you know, he's our master. And so we just become learners of him. And it's so important that our hearts get awakened to these truths. And that we hear the word taught. Yes. And that we regularly fellowship with other believers. There's just no other way really to grow healthy as a as a child of god that's right except that way and there's there's if it, the inward do you know that's where you're born again you're born in your spirit and the holy spirit will bear witness or he'll prompt you to do these things because you're a new creation in christ jesus it's the holy spirit drawing you now he's not going to drive you to do things he's going to woo you into the kingdom and to what things that you know, when we do those things, honestly, it bears, it comes down. First John, they'll tell you, when, when we do those things, that's some of the evidence that you are born again. It's a, you're hungry for the thing. It's an evidence that Jesus is your Lord. 
You're no longer ruling your life and doing the way in life the way you have been in the past. Now you've surrendered lordship to Jesus Christ. And those are really clear distinctions of a, of a believer. You know, after we have given our life to Christ, and then we look at our lives and judge ourselves, and there's no evidence of it, you're still basically living for the world, like the Bible says, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Well, if you don't have any desire to read the word, no desire to pray, no desire to worship God and join with other believers. I'll tell you what, you need to check up on yourself because I believe that you're, you, you're not saved. Because the Holy Spirit is drawing you to do these things. It's the one who is greater in you than the world. But you have to cooperate with him. He's not going to make you do anything. He's not your mom. He's not your mom. Be good to your moms today. <laughs> yeah, kids. <laughs> Husbands. You know, look at, uh, this is going to be on PowerPoint, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. If we just are hanging in the world and just maintain and stay there, look what John says. He says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father's not in him. That's straight up. It's, There's that contrast again, love of the Father, love of the world. Yeah. You know, according to, to 1 John, and really it's echoed throughout Scripture, there's going to be evidence in your life that you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. Where you've made Jesus the leader of your life, you're discovering His way on how to live, what's valuable, what's important, this is when you know Jesus is your Lord, not just your Savior. A lot of people want him to be their Savior, but they don't want him to be their Lord. But they're both the same package. And so that's what we've got to come to the understanding of. We're going to judge ourselves and look at the life that we're li living. And, well, i got to find this out. One thing is, is that we started at the beginning, the Holy Spirit we're, we're born again. We're going to be more sensitive to when we do wrong. And that's a good thing. It, conviction is not condemnation. Okay? Conviction is good. Condemnation is bad. <laughs> the Bible declares, There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when the Holy Spirit is convicting us, we ought to just say thank you and agree with him. Yeah, that was wrong, Lord. <laughs> that was wrong. In these five chapters, we're going to find a lot in them to apply in our lives. And so we're, we're going to take a look at uh, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. A lot in just these two verses. <laughs> yes, and actually, it it deserves a whole series uh, about the end times, uh, the events that are leading up to the end time, the delusion that God sends on the world. There's there's many many deeper things to look at, and we'll put when the Holy Spirit directs us, we'll we'll put one together, and it'll be. Uh, uh, surprise because you and I we're living in the last days right now the last of the last days and first John chapter 2 verse 18 says children it's the last hour and as you have heard that antichrist is coming so now many antichrists have come therefore we know it is the last hour they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would have continued with us, but they went out that it might become plain that they are not of us. Here's John. This is written about 2,000 years ago. If he says he was in the last hour, we're in the last minutes. The Bible declares that with God, a 1,000 years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. 
So it's important to understand God's time clock. <laughs> but we believe that we really are in the last days because of the chaos on the earth, the out and out straight up lies that uh, are happening all over the world. It's like what John says, is if you've heard that Antichrist is coming, that's an individual. There are many Antichrists out now, but the Bible declares that there will be one individual who is the man of lawlessness. And if you look at the events in the Middle East and you see what's happening here in America, uh, the stage is really set for this to happen. And uh, this man will come on the scene as somebody who has answers for many, many different problems. He's going to be extremely smart. He's going to be very strategic in military operations. Uh, Daniel describes him pretty clearly, but uh, we've got to understand that he comes in as a peaceful leader. He comes in, signs a peace treaty, the world's at peace, then three and a half years later, he breaks that. He, he just comes to a place where he's bringing destruction all over the earth. And that uh, he sets himself up in the temple in Jerusalem and he declares he's God. And he forces everybody, uh, great and small, to take a mark to buy or sell and to worship him. So we've got to be aware of this Antichrist. We have to be aware of the signs of the time that we're living in because all it's going to do is strengthen our faith. These people who are doing these things only proves the Bible true. And so the key is, is if follow what the Word says and we're going to be all right. Amen? So in the, the, the meantime, the course before the antichrist like john said wrote as you've heard that antichrist is coming that's like sort of the capital a the the man the personage of the antichrist that many so now many though have been at work in the world obviously he wrote this you know right at the beginning of the church some 50 years after the church began so many antichrist spirits yeah. have the church has weathered against a lot of Antichrist spirits for 2,000 years. Right. Uh, and he's referring here when he's writing, we said this at the very beginning, you know, he's, he's dealing with people that believed in Gnosticism and some other, you know, false teachings that, that had infiltrated the church within the first 50 years. Yeah. And so he's saying that the Antichrist spirit is working inside of the church. And... To explain Gnosticism just very simply is just to say that these were people that came into the church. Mm -hmm. It looked like they were born again. It looked like they wanted to belong to the family of God. They even became teachers in the church, obviously. But then they were teaching and denying that Jesus actually came as God in the flesh, that he was a good man, but he was a human. He was not God in the flesh, that he did not resurrect from the grave. So in that sense, they were denying the lordship of Jesus, yes. which would be denying the word of God that was being written and circulated to the churches like this is how we know God. Jesus is the word of God. And they were also fond of teaching uh, that a person can sin without consequences really spiritually because the flesh is evil. It's going to do evil things. What's most important is this knowledge, this right this spiritual knowledge that you had. And so they were per permissive about immoral behavior. And, of course, you can imagine. You have teachers in the church doing this. People are getting deceived. They're getting mixed up. And it's leading people astray. And then these false teachers, like if they would just move on, well, then people would just go, well, I don't know. I'm going to go on with them. They seem to know what they're talking about. Right. Uh, and Jesus himself warned about this. Like we have this on PowerPoint, Matthew 7:15. This is Jesus talking about, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And the apostle Paul wrote this in Acts uh, chapter 20, verse 29. He said, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Mm -hmm. So these things to divide, separate, confuse, deceive the 
people of God, the flock of God, the sheep of God, is the work of an antichrist spirit. And it's ultimately Satan is behind it. Right. To, get, to draw people away, to help people to doubt God, to go in opposition to God. And so John, you know, writes that they went out from us, but they were not of us. So these people, like I said, had come into the church and seemed as though, well, they're, they're children of God. But see, and then John writes in these letters, but here's how you tell a child yeah, of yeah. God versus a child of the devil. You can, when you read all five chapters, you begin to understand what he's addressing here. Because as they fellowship together, it became apparent that what some of these people were promoting and teaching was not the true gospel. Yes. And John wanted them to know the truth. And so he writes this letter, and he's describing the characteristics. Here's how you can know that you have eternal life. Here's how you know a person really knows and loves Jesus. And yeah. That's why he goes, they, they obey his commands. You know, the, remember the first chapter, uh, John's writing about the word of life. He's saying that uh, he existed from the beginning. He says, I have seen him. My hands have handled him. I heard him. I've touched him. I had fellowship with him. John is saying, I know him. John lived with him for three straight years. He ate with him, walked with him on the way. He was with Jesus as he ministered to the sick. He saw miracles happen. When men and women were raised from the dead, he fed 5,000 people with just a fish and loaves. And John was saying, I know him. I was there at the cross. I was there. He appeared and taught us 40 days in his resurrected body. I know him. And John is saying, my fellowship was with the Father and with the Son. And what he is saying in, in that scripture, he's saying, and I want you to have fellowship with us so that, yeah. and that we all have fellowship with the true Jesus. Yeah. We are now, like he says, now you are a child of God. This goes back to what Pastor Mamie was saying at the beginning. Sometimes you doubt, your, am I saved? I just sinned over here. Am I saved? And yeah, John wants you to know that you are now a child of God. You now have eternal life. Yeah. It's glory to God right now. Not going to get it. You are right now. And John's saying that the fact that these people went out from us was bound to happen. It's, it's going to, leaving is the proof that they were not of us. John's referring to that specific heretical group that was teaching a false uh, doctrine. And he says, actually, this letter is really, in a sense, telling the people, says, it's actually a good thing that they left. It's healthy for our church because we're keeping pure doctrine. We're not going to the left. We're not going to the right. We're staying true down the narrow path to the word of God. And really, the only way these false teachers left was because John the Apostle, he had authority, and he was the shepherd of that church, and he was not afraid to confront error. And he wanted these, because these letters, we call them books of the Bible, but they circulated to the early church as letters that were meant to be read to these house churches and various churches that were established. So he wanted the elders and he wanted the believers mm -hmm. to know the characteristics of a true follower of Christ. And then these under shepherds, the elders and pastors, you know, the churches would be confident to be able to tell the flock and know how to protect the flock, really. Yes. From the heresies. It's so true. That's why the church needs pastors who will be willing to protect the flock from error and false teaching. You know, there are so many ravenous wolves inside the church, and it has been going on since John was writing. However, there is a major increase in that right now, and we see whole denominations where these wolves are actually in charge of the denomination. They're promoting alternative lifestyles, which are clearly renounced in Scripture. They're not following the Word of God. And that's why 
people are scattered. Sheep are scattered all over the place. The sheep have been giving up on church. You know, they don't think they need a church family. They, they don't. Another one is they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be corrected. They don't really want to pastor. They just want to come in and experience the presence of God and then kind of like, yeah, tell me how good I'm doing. <laughs> and then if you don't get that there, people move on to the next church. That's another sign of the end times is that people have itching ears. They gather all these teachers around so that they can hear what they want to hear. Sheep that don't, they don't, the sheep don't know the word. Let's put it that way. That's why at this church, we're going to push you to read the word of God. We are saying that that is the book of life. That will keep you on the straight and narrow. That will cause you to be an overcomer in life. That will bring you the blessings of God. It will make secure your steps for sure. Because too many people are falling away. That's another sign of the end times. The great apostasy. Those people who used to believe are now stopping to believe. I'm deconstructing my faith. It's like you probably never had it at the beginning. So this is, this is really important to you to understand. We're a Bible-believing church. We're a Bible-teaching church. And we promise that we will do our best to take a stand for the truth, teach you the truth, correct you with the truth, nurture you with the truth. Thank you, Dave. This is, it's a call of God on your life that you can't say no to. And we're responsible for your souls. And we're willing to give you everything we know. Just like Paul pour my life out like an offering, like a drink offering. Because you matter to Jesus. You're actually his favorite. All of you. <laughs> Jesus is calling his bride to become without wrinkle, without a spot. And that takes effort on your part and our part. And it's so good for you and I to judge ourselves according to 1 John. Understanding that God himself dwells within you, helping you walk in purity, helping you be refined into that bride without spot or wrinkle. And then the Bible declares that when we finish our course and we've stayed steady, he's going to give us a crown of life. A crown of life given to us by God Almighty. bow your heads first way to in, to even have a future like what we describe is going through Jesus Christ the Bible clearly states there's no other name that's been given among men that people can be saved by and that's Jesus Christ it's good it's important to check yourself do you have evidence that you're a believer? Do you? Jesus is offering his love to you right now if you just accept it. That your sins can be forgiven. You can be born of his spirit. Your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life. Spirit is here, and he's inviting anyone at the sound of our voice to receive him, receive forgiveness of sin, receive him as Lord and Savior. Is there anybody in here today? And just really by a raise of your hand, all it is is an act of faith towards God, and it's even telling yourself, like, I'm doing this. Anybody in here today wants to give their life to Christ? 
I see that hand. Glory to God. Don't be nervous about this. Don't even be afraid about this because if you let this pass by, you'll be in hell and you'll raise both hands and both legs. To get out. But it'll be too late. But all heaven rejoices, you know, when one person repents and gives their life to Christ. It's a joy to Jesus to write your name in his book. And we receive salvation simply by faith. We cannot do anything to earn our salvation. Jesus offers it to us as a gift. And so we open up our heart to respond to that gift. And we pray a simple prayer because it's by grace we're saved through our faith. And this is not of yourselves. The scripture says it's from God. And so we yes. should we pray. Jesus. If you raise your hand, maybe just everybody pray together, and especially you who raised your hand. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord and Savior. I make you Lord and Savior. Of my life. Of my life. Help me. Help me. To walk with you. To walk with you. All the days. All the days. Of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you uh, came to be part of Community Life Church today. Uh, I just want to remind you, if you have an offering to drop off in the box, don't forget to do that. If you have a, a guest card to drop off in the box, don't forget to do that as well. I also want to remind you about our prayer partners. They're over here ready to pray for anybody that may need prayer. So if you prayed that prayer of salvation and you just want somebody to, to talk to you a little further about that, come pray with them. But also, if there's something else going on in your life, you just want somebody to come, come beside you and, and uh, pray with you, they're here, they're ready to pray with you, so I just encourage you to do that. If you would all stand with me, as we go today, I want to uh, commission you from Ephesians 3, now to him who is able to do exceedingly more than all we could ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us, go with God from this place. You've been commissioned to be a light to the world and to the people around you. Make sure you honor your mothers today, uh, and all the mothers grab a carnation on the way out as well. Have a wonderful week. Be blessed. You're dismissed.